Hey guys, Dr. Steve here. Listen, you do not need to hold on to shame and to guilt. I will show you how to do that, how to release this uh, emotional and energetic burden from your system. I just had a client last week that we did this exact exercise with that I'm going to share with you, and it helped to completely rearrange and reframe uh, what was happening inside of her and how she felt about the situation. So to make a long story short, uh, this woman who's a mom, uh, she felt so guilty and she'd apologized to her child because um, she was involved with an ex-husband. She had an ex-husband and um, he's been kind of out of the family's life for a period of time. And uh, they had met, the child was having a little bit of health issues. So they met together at this kind of mutual medical place, um, a facility basically. And um, when the uh, ex-husband got there, he actually started to fill out uh, these forms. And, um, and so when the mom and the son ar arrived to the medical facility, uh, she basically like, lost her marbles in that moment and snatched the the um, the clipboard out of his hand and started to scribble and rearrange uh you know um what he had filled out and so she felt horrible about this because she does not like to be angry and anyway she felt just horrible about the situation she felt like she put on a show in front of other people and anyways she felt really embarrassed etc so I think we all know times where we've done something where we may have a little bit of guilt or shame or we've, you know, we've tainted our self image or whatever's going on. And so what I did was basically, I, I, I got a little few more of the details about her, about the situation at hand. So we kind of like narrowed down what exactly was going on because I want you to just know this simple truth that your system does exactly what it thinks it needs to do every moment of every second. And the fact that I started to like move my hand like this for some reason, I didn't consciously decide to do that, but my system did. It felt like, hey, this is, this is the way to do this. You're gonna get some sort of advantage out of like shaking your hand like this. I don't know, I didn't like choose to consciously do that. My hand just started to jump up and do this. So I want you to know every single moment that your system is processing the immediate information around and it's making choices. It's making choices based on the past. It's making choices based on what it can project out into the future. It's, a, uh, it's doing 30 trillion bits of information per second that it's processing. 50 bits of information per second is your conscious mind. 30 trillion bits of information per second is the unconscious domain, the stuff that we're not aware of. So what we started to kind of like have this woman see is this, let me just kind of like tie it around a little bit for you, is if a child was crossing the road and the system as a human being, if the system or a mom or a parent saw that the child might be in danger and only a fraction of time was available, it would be an appropriate response for the parent to quickly grab that child, pull that child back quickly, maybe even get like a little like angry at the moment. Like, what are you doing there? What's going on? You know, just that that outburst that happens because of the fear and because of like just what could have happened and the potential dangers that were just around the corner. And so your system chooses because emotion moves the system. Anger is a very knee-jerk way to immediately respond to the environment and get the body to move. So when we're, if, if there was no, let's like take that same example, if there was no traffic around, you're on a little cul-de-sac and your kid's crossing the road or their foot is just stepping out onto the road, chances are you're not going to lose it. Probably you're going to be like, no, 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 come on back, come on back. You know, like, let's go, let's go. You're not going to quickly, swiftly grab it and just kind of lose yourself in that moment as you try to save the kid. So just know that different emotional states are going to arise based on the urgency of the perceived situation. So I knew this already in advance when I was speaking with her. So what I wanted to know is like, what was the urgency in there for the system to lose it really quick? 
And so when she, when she was telling me a little bit of the details about it, she said, well, on the form, it says primary and secondary parent. And I said, okay, well, you knew that that was going to be an issue. So, and you knew that you needed to get this information proper. So what was going on? Oh, well, he put himself as the primary parent and I was as the secondary parent. And it's like, okay, this woman comes from a professional background. She knows the importance of filling out forms properly. And so she already has some foresight due to her profession that you need to fill out these forms because they're gonna partly inform future behavior of the doctor or the staff or the team, et cetera. So she knew she needed to grab that form quickly and make sure that it was organized right. So then when I asked her, I said, well, what was the advantage to you in the moment of getting that name right? And what would have happened if you didn't actually get that name right? And she said, well, then her ex-husband, the father would have got all the medical information first and the kids barely speak with this guy, with this guy. And so he would have been the liaison between the medical information and the child. And since she's technically the primary child provider and they live with her full time, that she needs access to that information fast. She's the one that needs to be able to receive that medical information firsthand. So her system already knew this. And so it had to snatch that information quickly because there was time urgency. If she didn't, if she took a very relaxed approach to it, then what would have happened is she would have left her system, herself and her son vulnerable to a future potential threat that she knew would have created chaos in her world. And so what she did was she had to respond quickly. Now, not conscious her didn't respond. Unconscious her responded by gathering all the data of the importance of filling out forms correctly, of the future potential of being able to see in advance that there's gonna be problems that arise if I don't get this information right on this page. And I don't know if the medical assistant's gonna come and grab us to bring us into the doctor's office. This needs to happen now. And I said, so like, did you have time? Could you wait? Was there a delay? She's like, no, I had to like, I was literally filling this stuff out and rearranging it as we were walking towards the doctor's office. So her system had such a mode of urgency based on everything that her system was putting together in terms of the available information. So just like, pulling that, ripping that toddler back on if you sense that there's going to be danger in traffic. And knowing also that if there's no traffic, you're going to be more relaxed because you have more breathing room. The same thing with this particular instance. She had no breathing room. She had no time. She had to react. And the prime, the fastest emotion to react to something is anger. And so she, boom, boom, boom. she had to go fill that stuff up. And so as she started to see this, and I said, well, what would have been like, the drawbacks to you and to your child, if this would have happened, she said, well, my ex-husband would have gotten laced with information. He wouldn't have known what to do. My child doesn't want to be at this time around the father so much. Um, so that would have made things really awkward and confusing. It would just created total chaos and confusion in the future. If I would have taken a relaxed approach, like I think I should have. And so as she started to unpack this, she could see that if she did the opposite of what she thinks she should have done, she would have left herself, her son, completely vulnerable to chaos in the future. And in that moment, she, she saw that the clear advantage to doing what she needed to do was to get those names right on the form and fill out the form properly so that everybody was as clear as can be as to what's gone on. And so... When she started to see that, oh my God, if I was relaxed and if I was laid back, I would have, re I would have created a completely alternate reality for myself and left us really vulnerable. And she, she could just see, she could rest easy in her body, seeing that the, the, what her system chose was perfect for the moment. And so that allows appreciation because she was smiling at the end. It's just like, yeah, like, I did what I had to do. And I said, well, would you berate a parent? Would you like just radically criticize a parent if, if, they, if they thought there was danger with cars around and they snatched their kids super fast away from the sidewalk and just kind of lost their mind for a moment? She's like, no, no, like I get that. 
So yeah, same thing here. This is the exact same thing. Your system as a whole knew the threats, knew the dangers, drew from previous experience professionally that you knew you need to get these forms right. And your system coalesced all that information together for swift action. Once she saw that, that's the release. That's the let go process because she's like, I couldn't have been anyone other than who I was in that moment. Once you see that the gig's over, the game's up. And then she can go back and explain it to her kid of like, this is actually what happened because it's not so much the behavior that matters to me as a coach. I don't care about the behavior. I don't care what you do. I want to know the mechanics behind it because what you did moment to moment is perfect. And people in certain self-help kind of like gurus or, or, or people that we have in our culture that's partly leading the conversation will have you think that you should be manipulating or changing your behavior. The reality is, is that moment to moment, your system is partly deciding based on future, based on past, what's going to be taking place in this moment. And so you think you're in a wild sense of control, good luck, you're not. How you process the past influences things. How you think about the future influences your current behavior. And so you're not as in control as you think, although we do have conscious, we do have conscious control. We also are out of control. And that's the paradox. The paradox is we're in control of something and we're out of control of other things. And what people do is they judge their behavior like they should have chosen something different when they don't realize that their system of 30 trillion bits of information per second is also heavily involved in the decision-making process. And so when you go back and use reflective awareness to really look to see a scenario as to why you did what you did, you will see the underlying mechanics that totally and completely makes sense for why your system chose what it did. And that's why I wrote in my book, Finding Magic in the Mess, I wrote a chapter on forgiveness, that it's not necessary. Now, you're going to, in the knee jerk, feel like forgiveness is important, like she did with her son, because God, like I did behavior that I didn't think was becoming of a parent or becoming of an adult or becoming of someone rational. Okay, fair enough. But that's not where the game ends because then it's still, you're still laced in judgment. And so the point in reflective awareness is to look back so that you can love and appreciate and understand what the heck was doing. So when she saw, oh my God, I was playing out my role as a protective mother, I, like I would have done that on the side of the road with my child. I did that because that's equally important. And, and I was protecting in that moment. And once she sees that she was actually playing out the perfect role for her, in that perfect moment in time, she lets go. And that's really the moment of forgiveness because in that moment, she wouldn't change a thing. And so if you wouldn't change a thing, you can be grateful for the moment. And if you're grateful for the moment, you bathe your system in appreciation, you recenter and recalibrate the heart and the brain, you create a state of coherence in your system, and you're at the most vital and healthy state in that moment in time when you see that what you did was perfect for the moment. And that's a really important piece that I do in my coaching to make sure that you're clearing out these stresses of the past, that you're clearing out these guilts and shames and these resentments because they consume and bog down and bag down the environment and the internal terrain and they create noise and brain noise in there, and create a mess, it creates an absolute mess. So you might have to rewatch this video because just pick a moment for you in the past where you thought you should have done something different, apply exactly what I showed you. And I assure you, if you actually look for the mechanics, for the underlying structure and form behind the behavior, you will see exactly what was going on. You'll see exactly why you did something and you'll see exactly why it couldn't be any other way. And if it was the other way, I want to encourage you to ask if I was the way that I think I should have been, what would have happened in that scenario that would have been a drawback or a negative to me or my life or the people around me? Because there's a reason your system did this massive calculation and chose your behavior. There's a reason that it calculated everything and didn't choose a different behavior. 
it wasn't so much you, but it was the calculated total sum of information between your conscious awareness and all the unconscious data that's informing you on the production of your neurochemistry, your emotional profiling, your neuropeptides that are secreted to make emotions, all this moment to moment to moment to nanosecond are being decided for you. So I want you to learn the art and the science of letting go, which is these two simple questions was I asked her in that moment, what was the value to you and the benefits to you and your son and to everybody else around you of you taking swift action like that? And if you were laid back, what would have been the drawbacks to everybody else around you? Those two questions expose exactly why what you did and you as in a sum total was absolutely perfect in that moment. And in that moment, you reconnect coherence. You feel reconnected to who you are. You revalue yourself. Instead of being in guilt and shame, you revalue and you see I was perfect in that moment. That was the perfect response. And it was exactly what I needed to do in that moment. And that, my friends, is the way you liberate stuck energy, emotional energy, guilt, shame, and stuff that you haven't quite understood. That simple. Okay, beautiful. Much love, guys.